you're placing something under x-rays, it's very hard to see those soft tissue structures. This is an example where the nerve is just kind of far out. Remember when I flipped the patient upside down, here's the vertebral body, here's the facet joints. I want to put contrast agent or medications next to that nerve. Using CT, I can slip right by in that little crevice and inject the steroid. You see the next shot. Now we can see we made the injection. We have the medication coating that nerve right here. Very difficult to do under fluoroscopy. We use what's called um, single step or single shot fluoro. What that means, um, it's not real time in the sense that you're not injecting and watching. What it is is take a picture, move the needle, take a picture, take a, but it's small snapshots. So it's only 15 to 20 seconds while I move the needle and see what I'm doing. Okay, and what are the outcomes for epidural steroid injections? Uh, the interlaminar epidural steroid injection has moderate evidence in the cervical spine, limited evidence in the lumbar spine. Transferaminal epidural injections, on the other hand, have moderate evidence in both the cervical and lumbar spine. That's for long-term relief. Long-term defined as uh, six months out. For short-term relief, we have the same thing, except we now have moderate evidence in the lumbar spine. So the earliest evidence for these procedures indicates that you can create short-term relief at the very least. The dur durability of that response depends on the underlying cause for the back pain and uh, your response to the steroids.